Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here with a really cool vehicle. This is the electric mid-drive fat tire trike. That's not only the description of it, that's also the name of it. <laughs> the name of this is the electric mid-drive fat tire trike. It has all of that stuff all rolled up into one and has really powerful motors and big, great tires. So it's a very cushy ride. Let's, let's just go ahead and jump in. All right, so it's a pretty big vehicle. You can see the, the length of it kind of consumes most of this trail that we're on. And by the way, this is a really nice trail, a good one to actually showcase uh, the capabilities of this trike. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty darn long. It takes what would be considered kind of a normal front end. And then on the back end here, uh, where you have the rear triangle. That rear triangle still exists, but then it's extended uh, by this base here uh, in the back end that has the axle. It also has a platform for mounting the rack. We'll kind of get into the specifics of the nuts and bolts in a little bit, but conceptually, this is a very long vehicle. It's also pretty heavy. Uh, this cargo rack, I'm not certain the capacity uh, of it by weight, but it can carry quite a bit. You know, we have definitely have not fully utilized it. We've only got, you know, a, clipboard glasses, water bottle, and a couple of camera electronics. So the length of this guy is actually 20 inches long and it can hold, we did the math <laughs> in the shop, holds about 55 liters uh, worth of capacity in here. Um, not so much weight, but just the size of so 55 liters worth of, of, well, whatever you want to take with you. You could totally go camping with this thing if you wanted. I know a few tents that'll fit right in there with a sleeping bag and all of that, but Kind of getting ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, the, this is a pretty beefy guy. Uh, this weighs in total about 102 pounds uh, for the entirety of what you see here, including the basket and the battery and all of that. And so this is definitely kind of an adventure sort of bike or trike. This is meant for getting up, getting out and going pretty darn <laughs> into some areas that are pretty darn sketchy in some spots. Now it is a trike so balance is really nice. You don't have to worry so much when you're riding on the road or even when you're riding on a trail about tipping over on account of that. Now the fat tires definitely give you access to areas such as this. So you do have to balance your weight on the vehicle as you're turning and as you're going over obstacles. Um, but nonetheless, if it's balance that you're worried about in general, uh, just riding a bicycle, then this would totally work. It would totally work for you. Uh, you can get as adventurous as your skills can take you. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and jump into the mechanical specifications and we'll go ahead and start up at the front of the bike uh, with the tires themselves. Uh, so these are a 20 inch uh, by 4 inch tire, so that's 20 inch diameter and a 4 inches wide. And these are Kenda Crusade tires that have quite a bit of surface area on them. You can see we've started to utilize them by digging into the sand a little bit here. Um, and these tires have a fair amount of cushion to them. You can see they're kind of soft and you can squeeze them uh, with your bare hands. Uh, that does provide uh, a little bit of cushion as you're riding. It kind of softens things up a little bit. It wouldn't necessarily take the place of a suspension because a suspension, you know, built into the frame, uh, a main purpose for that is not so much comfort, which helps, but it's also built for control to keep your tires on the trail that you're riding on. Uh, so these are definitely good for comfort. They're definitely good for surface area, getting grip in some loose terrain, such as kind of this sandy washed out area that we're here right now. Uh, and that's a really good point because it's on all three tires, the same tire size, the same tread and everything like that. So um, continuing on, uh, so the brakes on this are actually triple. So there's three brakes. So the brakes on this guy uh, are a hydraulic disc brake. Uh, it's a dual piston caliper uh, from a company called Zoom uh, that makes this system. And that's going into the 160 millimeter rotor that you have on the front of the bike. On the back of the bike, you have the same thing. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it out a little bit so we can kind of see the other side there. Uh, so you have a disc brake way in the back there um, on one wheel and you have it on the other one as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, depending on the design of the trike and kind of the use and the purposes of it, you might see some that have uh, one brake on the back. You might even see some trikes that have no brake on the back or no brake on the front. It's really it really depends on the design of the vehicle. It's not quite as uniform as, as bicycles in that sense. Uh, so there is like some kind of customization depending on the use 
And for this one, <laughs> for like an adventure bike, yeah, having three brakes is definitely, definitely appreciated, so. Okay, moving back up to the front of the bike. Uh, so here we have the RST Guide front fork. Uh, so this front fork provides a little bit of cushion. This is actually a 50 millimeter travel uh, for the front fork. And of course this is nice and wide to accommodate the larger tire. It's a specific fork that has a really, really <laughs> wide breadth uh, for what it can do. And uh, also on here you have the mounts for the fender. So this is a metal fender. I particularly like metal fenders and it has quite a few brackets on here. Uh, these two brackets to hold the fender in place, which is nice and sturdy. Uh, it's not terribly common to see brackets in this orientation, but I like them a lot. And that's also holding the light up on the front end. And the light does have a metal bracket, which is nice. That's not going to get bashed around and broken, um, not by a long shot, which is good because this bike is totally going to go into some very serious, <laughs> serious terrain for, for that. Uh, so on the top, you do have a lockout on, on the far side, the preload adjust on the near side from you. And of course the cabling kind of comes up from the front. Uh, so on the cabling up here, they do have a couple of wire loom, like, um, sleeves here it's not like a total uniform sleeve it's just a couple of spots that they've kind of identified here that might be uh, in need of that uh, personally i like it when they do like a full loom i know they're capable of it but on this particular one they chose to go that route uh, so that comes up to the controls uh, up on the handlebars here the controls are really nice because it's pretty simple you don't have um, a derailleur uh, up or an indexer or shifter up on the front of the bike we'll kind of get to that in a second when we go down low again uh, but it makes for a fairly clean look. Uh, I have the brake handles up here for the hydraulic disc brakes, and it also has a parking brake. So after you squeeze down uh, the brake, you can pull on that little pin right there. Oop, it's a little tough. There we go, nice and sturdy. Uh, so after you pull down on that pin, now the brake is engaged and the trike won't roll away. And they do that so, well, it won't roll away, but also it kind of takes the place of a kickstand in a way because obviously it's not gonna fall over on its own, um, but it very well could roll unless you have a parking brake. And that parking brake is on either side if you wanna do the front brake, brake or if you wanna do the rear brake. You've got a parking brake lever on either one. There is also a electric cutoff signal coming from this set of brakes. Uh, so that little electric signal gets sent down to the motor controller to cut off power anytime you pull on the brakes. And that's a safety mechanism so you're never fighting against it, trying to do two things at once, uh, which is good really good because this bike has not only pedal assist but a throttle and so the brakes will absolutely stop you that's kind of the important point don't be afraid of the brakes <laughs> they're going to work like normal especially on a trike you know when you're on a bicycle sometimes someone will hit the brakes and then you know it'll cause them to kind of dismount because they need to get their balance but on a trike you know when you hit the brakes it just stops and you can stay where you are you don't need to jump off or anything like that so that's a good thing these handlebars have a tiny bit of a sweep to them just a little bit to kind of meet you, uh, a tiny bit to kind of have the bar come instead of straight out, just a tiny bit back to meet your arms. Uh, there is a friction mounted uh, grip here that has a little bit of an ergonomic uh, flare to it to kind of grip onto your palm uh, right there. Uh, they are friction mounted, so they do they can kind of roll if you're like super strong, you can grab that and twist it, kind of get into a little arm wrestling match with it. Personally, I like the lock-on grips that they have on some of the other bikes, but that's an easy upgrade you can totally do a local bike shop if you wanted but these are fine you know they work they're good uh, so the stem of this actually does fold down uh, so this of course is the stem area and there's a little latch right here you pull up on there and then the handlebars kind of swing out of position so if you wanted to get this say underneath a shelf or perhaps in the back of a canopy for a truck you can collapse a large part of the height just with one little switch and then boom you're back in business uh, same thing goes for the adjustable seat post. I think you guys know how that works. You want to do the lever, kind of pull up on the seat, and then put the lever back down, and then you're ready to rock. This is actually a pretty good thing if you wanted to share the bike with somebody else. You know, you can just adjust the seat on the fly without having to get any tools. Uh, continuing on with more of the mechanical side. So the frame on the center has that step-through portion of it. Uh, that's this bar that kind of comes down a little bit lower so you can get a really good angle with your feet. You don't have to raise your feet way over a bar that would say be in that area over here. Uh, it's pretty low, so that's a very low standover height. Makes it a very approachable trike. And that's an important thing for a lot of trike customers is that they want something that's easy to get on and off and easy to balance. And this thing covers both of those pretty well. It's not, it's not like a serious off-road mountain bike, of course, because it's a trike and you have an extended wheelbase in the back, but they do have a fair amount of the weight up front. 
so the battery is mounted here uh, in the middle as well as the motor. And this is a fairly beefy motor. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a beefy motor that weighs, gosh, I think about 15 pounds. The battery itself is close to nine pounds. So that's some of the weight that's kind of pushed forward. So that would help if you wanted to carry some extra cargo in the back. It would try to balance things out a little bit front to back. Um, on a trike, it's not nearly as important as a bicycle. Um, you know, you're kind of covered because you have a wide wheelbase in the back. Uh, but nonetheless, it is kind of a nice thing to consider that if you wanted to put some cargo in the back, you have a little bit more of the weight up front uh, with the electronics to kind of balance that out. Uh, so <clears throat> in the gearing side of things, let's go ahead and pull it forward and we'll hit the locking lever right there so we can keep it there. There we go. By the way, this is Alec. Hey everybody, how are you? Alec is from Electric Bike Technologies and he's been helping us check out a lot of different trikes. We're actually going to go to Alec very soon when we talk about the, the bottom end of the rear because it's actually a little bit out of outside of my expertise. So Alec, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the rear end? Yeah, absolutely. If I can even start with the frame, um, it's pretty exciting. This trike is really built. Um, this, this is a really sturdy trike for like backwoods exploring. Um, you can see if we start down here on the frame, a lot of trikes will have sort of a normal bicycle rear end. This trike, we've got a seat stay bridge and a second seat stay bridge as well. The chain stay also has two bridges and the dropouts are almost three times as thick as a normal bike. What this means is that the big long rear end and the cargo rack are really sturdy and stiff and much less likely to cause you trouble than a trike that's lightly built. This guy, we've got all these triangles in here, all of this bracing, and then when the rear end connects onto the main frame, we've got three M10 sized bolts with nylock nuts on each end. So this trike is really built to last. But as you follow the frame back, we have a differential gear in the back here. And what this serves is to help you turn the trike. On a normal trike, you often have a fixed right-hand wheel that will do the driving and the braking. As in, when you pedal and when you brake, the right-hand wheel does all the work, and the left-hand wheel is free to spin however it wants in order to allow you to make a turn without the tire rubbing. On this one instead, we've built in a differential gear, which we call an easy turn differential. This guy is similar to a differential in a car in that it allows each axle in the back to spin at a different RPM. What this means is that we can make a tight turn in either direction. On a normal trike, since your right hand wheel is fixed and always doing all of the driving, when you wanna make a tight turn, you can make a tight turn only going that way. You can't make a tight turn going that way. On this trike, you can make a tight turn in either direction. Um, so this, this allows you to navigate tight spaces a little better, um, especially at sort of like low speeds when you may be pedaling and using the motor some instead of coasting. Um, so this differential gear is a pretty unique setup that we've got in this trike, and it also allows us to easily set up two independent brakes in the back which are controlled with the hydraulic brake levers as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the guys over here at Electric Bike Technologies, uh, one of their gigs is electrictrike.com. I've actually been here reviewing a lot of electric trikes and yeah they know those things very well. Like I said the the trikes are a little bit out of my expertise because it's electric bike review uh, but that's a lot of cool stuff to learn about how the differential works and about how it can kind of affect the ride. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the mechanical system and then we'll jump into the electrics, my favorite part. So in the back of the trike, in the very back, uh, you do have a 20 tooth sprocket in the back. So this is a single speed uh, set of gears. Uh, this is part of the differential system. This actually isn't like an internal hub for gears. So you do have a single speed that's a 20 tooth in the back and up in the front you have a 46 teeth uh, chain ring uh, right up here with a dual bash guard on either side so that's going to keep keep your pants out of the chain hopefully and also protect it from being hit as you're going over some fairly adventurous terrain and a special note this is a zinc coated chain uh, so that's going to resist rust uh, fairly well have 170 millimeter cranks and some nice metal well go pedals uh, one last thing to talk about is the seat uh, so it is a rigid seat post um, so that is not going to be terribly comfortable. You could swap this out for a suspension seat post if you wanted, which has a little bit of compression to kind of ease up the bumps. 
uh, that's a pretty easy thing any bike shop can do. And the seat is actually not so bad. So this is about an eight inch wide seat uh, with kind of a faux leather uh, kind of wrap to it with some nice gel in there. Feels pretty comfortable. You know, it's a nice seat for sitting, but you can also do some good pedaling on here as well. That's a good seat from Velo. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the electric system. We'll go ahead and start with uh, the controls. So we kind of talked a little bit about the uh, brakes, how they have an electric signal in there for the cutoff to the motor. Uh, but for the electric system itself, you interact with it primarily through pedaling and the throttle. Uh, so up on the top, you have the display. And this is a pretty nice bright display, which shows you kind of an automotive uh, motif. You turn it on. Right now it's turned on already. Let's go ahead and start from the start. And so you press the power button on the remote switch and it will boot up and it'll show you a couple of things uh, from the get-go. Uh, right here in the middle is your miles per hour, how fast you're going at any given time. Right now we're not going terribly fast. Uh, once you press the plus or minus button, that will control how much pedal assist you're getting uh, as you pedal. Uh, so you press the plus button a few times, you can crank it up all the way to level five pedal assist, or you can scale that back down depending on your needs. And you can do this on the fly. You don't have to stop the bike or do anything else. Uh, you can do it as you're pedaling or braking if you wish. Um, so on the top right, you have the percentage of how much battery you have left with a nice little bar graph to show you that as well. Also a clock and you have a variable display on either end on the bottom right. So that will cycle through various metrics as you press the information button. So pressing that information button will cycle through things like average speed, max speed, range, things like that. So pressing the light button and holding it, it'll show you a little light indicator. You'll notice that the display itself went dim. So that turns on the integrated lights for both the front and the back. Uh, so right here is the front light that turns on based on the display. And on the back of the bike, you might have seen it as we were coming around a little bit. The very back, right underneath the basket, is a nice wide light uh, so with a reflector right in the middle. Uh, so that's a nice bright light. It works pretty good. I like it a lot. Uh, let's go back, turn the display light off so you can see it. So that's the display. And again, the, uh, the miles per hour will increase as this little bar kind of increases as well. Gives you a pretty nice look. There's also a throttle up on the front end. When you twist the throttle, or rather when you press down on that little tab, then we're cranked up pretty high. <laughs> so it's got a lot of power to it. I'll talk about that in the motor, but yeah, pressing down that little tab will engage the motor directly and that puts out a fair amount of power. So this is the Bafong uh, Ultra Motor, Ultra 1000. So this is putting out a thousand watts uh, nominal and it kind of goes up from there. Uh, the guys here at Electric Bike Technologies have it spec'd out. How high does it go uh, for you guys? So you've got a 20 to 30 amp setting on there. Um, so at 20 amps, you've got 960 watts. And at 30 amps, uh, that comes out to something like 1440 watts peak. Okay, so 1440 watts peak that they have this exact bike set up for. That's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot of power. And I'd, I wish we had some sort of trophy we could put in the back to haul it around because that would really showcase the power of it. Because when you're on a trail like this, you know, you get a fair amount of power, but that's, it's almost like too much. You know, the wheels will start grinding through the wet terrain that we're in here, which is fine because it's fat tire and it can do it, but it doesn't really showcase the, like that raw hill climbing, yeah. you know, torque that it can put out. Anyways, regardless, this is a, a massively powerful motor. I mean, 1440, that's like, gosh, I mean, a, a lot of power. A Bosch motor is like nominally set for 250. And I mean, you don't have a throttle. And you don't have a throttle, that's true. <laughs> uh, but the pedal assist on this is one thing I should mention. So aside from the fact that it has a throttle and it puts out a ton of power, a ton. So the pedal assist on this is a torque based pedal assist, uh, which is pretty nice. So a torque based pedal assist, I'll kind of show you an illustration. Uh, for a lot of pedal assist sensors, especially ones on like conversion kits or trikes, um, you'll commonly see a little disc that is counting magnets. That's a cadence sensor. Uh, on this one, it's not, it's not counting exclusively how fast the pedals are rotating to give you power because it takes a little bit of time. You know, the pedals don't rotate when you sit down and when you press. Well, let me make sure it's off. <laughs> That's a good, uh, good idea there. Okay, so if you sit down and you press on it with your, with your feet, the, the cranks don't move at all in that position. So a cadence sensor isn't terribly powerful at the, or a cadence sensor isn't terribly useful at the first part of the ride when you're just sitting down and pressing on the pedals to get it moving at all. And that's where a torque sensor comes in. So inside of this unit, there is a torque sensor built in that is reading how much stress you're putting on the pedals. 
so we can sense when you press on the pedals that that goes through the crank and that goes into the internal system it knows that you want power because of how it affects all of those parts in there and it gives it out as a result when you press down boom there it goes without having to wait for it to turn and so a torque sensor is a really nice thing to have on a mountain bike because in many cases you come up to an obstacle and your momentum uh, has been affected by perhaps a previous one or you're maybe a little bit hesitant to go at a higher speed uh, so it relies a lot on that torque sensor to get going and aside from that a torque sensor overall provides a very smooth experience more like traditional cycling that's not as much of rotating the cranks as a formality it feels more like you are uh, like you're part of the bicycle, part of the electric system. It really kind of integrates all together at once. But we're gonna go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a ride and I'll kind of tell you a little bit more about how it operates. Okay, so here we are on the electric mid-drive fat tire trike. Ooh, we're having some fun. Uh, so it's a little bit precarious because I'm holding the camera, but we're still nonetheless going over some good roots and rocks and washing through this sandy area. It was dumping buckets last night, so this is still very wet terrain something that even a, a traditional bicycle would probably be slipping out on let alone a trike uh, so i doubt i would be able to get nearly this far with a regular set of wheels on a trike uh, but this one does it just fine you know i feel like i'm i mean it's bumpy of course because it's off road and there's lots of rocks and things and this road this trail has not been cleared um not by a long shot um but yeah it's it's pretty good it can handle it you know, something that uh, I'm pretty impressed about. Uh, so I didn't mention in too much detail the fenders. These are some metal fenders on the front as well as on the back. And you can see there's kind of a muddy area that I'm avoiding here. And I'm quite glad that there's a set of fenders. I'm going a little slow just to keep it, uh, keep it nice. Uh, so let's go over this little bumpy area right here. Uh, there's a little bit of some rocks and roots coming up. Yes. <laughs> It's a little harder because you can see I got one hand on the steering wheel. So if I had another, well, handlebars, if I had another hand, I'm sure I'd be handling it a little better. But yeah, this is fun. <laughs> this is this is a lot of fun. Uh, so the torque sensor uh, on the pedal assist is pretty good. You know, it picks up nice. And I've got two wheels planted on the ground in the back. Uh, so it can, can really utilize that as well. Um, this system really does benefit from the torque sensor. I would say uh, the torque sensor on this one is really nice for the off-road sections especially if you're on the road you know it's it's not as utilized but off-road it really really shines i like it a lot so let's go ahead and jump into this clearing over here and show you a little bit more all right guys so here we are uh checking out the ultra motor equipped on the electric mid-drive fat tire trike uh this is a big beast so <laughs> let's go ahead and crank it up all the way and we'll go ahead and get rolling on the pavement at first and then we'll get into the dirt and kind of go on the throttle from there. Let's go. So we actually, it was a pretty good run. Uh, we got the chance to go over a really tiny hill over there, but I kind of slowed down a little bit so I could let the motor kind of do the work for me. And it sure did. I, mean, I had to lean forward a little bit to keep the balance right. But yeah, this motor just hauls, it pulls. <laughs> that was fun.
All right, so one thing that I forgot to mention was the battery. We kind of glossed over it. This is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery that mounts into the down tube. And similar to a lot of the other electric trikes that you've seen from the guys here at Electric Bike Technologies, it has that locking lever to kind of keep it into position and you pull it out from there. On the opposite side of the battery, it does have a USB port, uh, which is also complemented by a USB port, which is located underneath the display. So that's a pretty cool thing. You want to charge your phone or something like that, you can totally do it. But yeah, thanks for checking out the review of the electric mid-drive fat tire trike with me. It's actually been a lot of fun to check this out with the other trikes uh, here in Pennsylvania. I really like riding on the wet washout area just now. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah, if you want to check out the full specifications, measurements, and review for this bike, go to electricbikereview.com where you can compare this with all the other trikes that I've done here in Pennsylvania with these guys, or you can compare it with anything else that you can find on the site. We've got over a thousand bikes covered, so yeah, yeah you can have a heyday there. Uh, but yeah, you can also participate in the forums. You can ask a question or participate in the community on our site as well. That's a really good way to interact and kind of be involved. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.